Hi everyone, my name is Francois Verges. Uh, so I'm from France and I live in Ontario, Canada. And uh, so I started my business about uh, three years ago. It's called Senfio Networks and I work as an independent Wi-Fi consultant. <coughs> so today it's more going to be a business talk, uh, sharing a little bit my experience and uh, you know, starting a business in the industry and uh, working as an independent consultant. So in our industry, we call ourselves independent consultant, but uh, it has other denominations in other industries, freelancers, contractors, uh, self-employed, but essentially it all, com all comes up to one individual providing professional services, right? Uh, so some uh, stats to start uh, today's trend. Um, this uh, association called Freelancer Union in the US, they did a survey in 2014, and they found out that 53 million Americans we're doing freelancer work, so that's uh, one third of the population. And by 2020, 40 to 50 percent of the workforce is expected to be a freelancer. And so the freelancer economy is not only thriving in the, in, in the U.S. It's the same thing in, uh, that we see in Europe, Asia. And um, important statistic is that uh, the millennials make a big portion of these freelancers. So this this makes me think that the trend is going to continue. And I'm not the only one to believe so. 77% of the freelancers say that the best days of the freelance job market are yet to come. All right, so let's go back to our industry. And this is how I see it. We have two different profiles of independent uh, Wi-Fi consultant. And I call it the safe profile and the flexible profile. Safe profile would be long-term contracts with a few clients. So basically, it would be a consultant uh, working like full-time hours for one dedicated client. And would have like a six months, one year contract, and then would renew the contract or would just go and work for someone else. So, the advantage I see uh, with this profile is that you get consistent revenue. Um, and the disadvantage is that you get fewer customers. So, if you're looking at grow your business, um, it's, it might not be the objective, right? But if you're looking at growing your business, it might be a disadvantage. It's a little fle less flexible since you're dedicating all, your, all of your time to one specific client. It might be uh, less flexible. And also, uh, when you finish a contract and you get back out on the market, it might be difficult because you, you've been out of the market for so long. Sometimes it gets hard to get on the new next contract. And then we have the flexible uh, profile. So it would be the contrary, shorter uh, contracts, but more clients, more customers. Uh, so the disadvantage is that the revenue can be inconsistent. If uh, one month you don't have much uh, work and then the next month you have more work, it, the revenue is going to fluctuate. But the advantage is that uh, you have more customers, so uh, it increases the value of your business and it's easier to grow your business later on if you need to hire people and uh, if that's your ob objective. And it's also mo more flexible. You can uh, uh, manage your time better, and uh, you get to work with different different clients from different verticals, so it also makes it more interesting. So I've, I've chosen the flexible profile for my company. Like I said, there's, I don't think one is better than the other. It just meets different needs. So the basics when you want to start a business, uh, what is the main goal of a business? Make money, right? If you don't make money, you die. <laughs> Uh, so now, how do, we, how do we make sure that uh, we start uh, good at the beginning? So work on a business plan. Uh, if you're like me and uh, you, you, you have no business background really, uh, you can start with a book uh, named um, Business Model Generation, and they give you a canvas that uh, helps you to define your business plan. So with that, you can find out, you know, um, you can define who your customer is going to be, what resources you will need, um, things like that. Uh, to get started. After that, you can perform a market study and study the competition. Um, look out for public services for that, because I was able to get a free market study from um, the province of Ontario to start with, and they gave me a list of uh, business and partners in my, in my city, and then they, give, they gave me like democratic stats about my city as well, uh, all for free, so look out for free resources too for yourself. And then after that, uh, choose a name. It sounds like it's an easy step, but it's not an easy step. And when you choose your name, make sure that the uh, domain name is also available and buy it for yourself. And after that, you're all good to go. You can register your business. When you register your business, you get your tax number, and you can use your tax number to bill your customers and start making money.
All right, so I like to compare the way business uh, work to the way a network protocol works. So for a network protocol, we have the payload, which is the good stuff, and then we have the header, which is uh, needed for the protocol to operate properly. And uh, in the business, in terms of how you use your time, you have the billable hours, so the good stuff, and then you have the time you spend to, like all the admin work and uh, the overhead that's needed for the business to operate, but you're not getting any revenue out of it. So just like a network protocol, the less overhead you have, the more efficient you become, your business becomes. So at the beginning, you, you might have a business this efficient, a lot of overhead. Some of the business are like this when they start, which is okay, right? <laughs> but the, the idea is to slowly evolve into uh, you know, having a business this efficient. So you want to be spending a large portion of your time be, uh, working on billable uh, work. And then you, obviously you're still gonna have a little bit of a overhead for the admin work and for what, whatever you want to do to develop your, your business. So before I talk about developing the business, I'm gonna talk about the different type of customer you can expect to have working as an independent consultant. So I see three, uh, according to my experience, recruiting agencies, uh, VAR service provider integrators, and the final clients. So let's say you have a, a contract with a recruiting agency, usually how it goes is that they have a contract with the VAR, and then the VAR has the contract with the client, and then you provide the services. And in terms of money flow, the final client pays the VAR, the VAR pays the recruiting agency, and the recruiting agency pays you, right? So a lot of people to pay, to fee, I guess. Same, same uh, concept, I'm gonna go fast on this one. So from a, from a business standpoint, this model is, uh, is the best because you get, uh, um, basically it has more potential to become long-term relationships, right? If you have your final clients, they might, if you do a good job, they're gonna come back to you for other jobs, right? But, you know, it's not, it's not always easy to go straight to the final clients. That's why sometimes you go through VARs or through recruiting agency for bigger companies. So to develop your business, you can develop business tools. Uh, so they're gonna help you to be more efficient in the way you do all the admin work, right? So, uh, I've developed a couple myself, one tool to estimate the number of hours needed to do a, a validation survey. Sometimes I, get, I often get the questions like, how long would it take to do a validation survey for X amount of square foot? So I developed a spreadsheet that according to the environment, uh, I can um, come up with a number of hours on site, number of hours off site, and, and get some, a number quickly. Uh, second one is a template uh, that I use to provide quotes and statement of work for a personalized training session, something we can start from. And the, th the third one is still work in progress, but I want to get the list of different requirement questions uh, per vertical for like first contact. When you, you're on the phone with a customer and try, you're trying to grasp what they want to do, um, I think it would be handy to have a list of questions I can, I can ask in, or, in order to build the, uh, the business relationship. Branding. Uh, branding is important. So you own a business, so the, the company's branding is important, so stuff like website, marketing, charity, volunteering. And also, since you the main, the main guy in the business, your, your branding is also important. So training, certifications, blog, social media. I've actually got business through my blog and, and through Twitter, so that's important. And I put updated resume here, because uh, it's always, um, good to have an updated version of your resume, so if someone's asking for it, yeah, you can send it quickly and it looks good on you. And then finally, education. So educate yourself on Wi-Fi. It overlaps a little bit uh, with my own stock, so. <laughs> but um, it's important, right? So if you edu educate yourself, you can better educate your customers. So you're gonna provide the service, and on top of the service, you can share your knowledge, give tips, and uh, they always appreciate that. And you can educate yourself on other topics. So I like audiobooks. I put out some that I liked. And I also like uh, watching TED Talks. So a little inspiration slide to finish. It actually comes from one book um, from John, John Maxwell that's called uh, the, um, I forgot the name now that I'm on stage. <laughs> Uh, but basically the idea is that you want to set your goals high, you want to dream big, and even if you don't reach your goal, at the end of the day you would have achieved more than if you set yourself uh, low. That's it for me. Thank you guys.